alternative transportation, bicycle storage, and changing rooms. Our intent, uh, this is 4.2, the intent is the exact same as 4.1, reduce pollution and land development impact from automobile use. Okay, good enough intent. How do we do that? What are the requirements? Option one, <clears throat> if we were talking about commercial buildings, bike racks or storage for 5% or more of the building occupants within 200 yards of the building entrance. Okay, easy enough. Provide showers and changing facilities for half a percent of something called FTE occupants, full-time equivalent. Circle this, highlight this, whatever you got to do to, to remember this um, you know, in your notes. FTE occupants, full-time equivalent. For example, if you have two workers that are both working a half day, four hours a day, that's one FTE occupant. Even though they might both be there in the morning, they still comprise one full-time equivalent occupant. All right? <clears throat> Let's talk cost. Let's talk issues. So it's a big issue cost-wise. And these last credits up to this point are basically just about selecting an appropriate site. And maybe that adds to the cost in an urban area. Maybe it doesn't. Hard to say. Now let's talk about this one. Big deal? Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right, explain why. I don't know, bicycle racks aren't going to be terribly expensive. Okay, bike racks are cheap. I'm with that. How about the other part of this? This is and. You have to do both. Well, you have plumbing within the building anyway. If you can make a room, you know, add to the bathrooms and make them have a shower and a changing room, it probably isn't going to... Probably not a big deal. Ah, here's, here's, a, here's a statement. We have a mechanical, aspiring mechanical engineer here in the front row, and he's going to explain to me the difference between designing the plumbing system for an office space that has break rooms and laboratories compared to an office space that we throw showers into. What's the difference in mechanical systems? There will be a lot of systems coming up, so uh, it would be pretty costly, expensive with... Uh, they come mm -hmm. in there. It's, it's not the same thing with the normal uh, restrooms we have. There we so. go. Okay. Now, the answer is it depends. Did we already have, say, a kitchen that already had a lot of hot water generation and we already, ha we already had a large uh, hot water capacity? If so, you're right. Eh, no big deal. But if we didn't, if this is just an office space and all we had was a little bit of hot water for laboratories, this is a big deal, adding a system capable of providing showers. Let's talk about this space business. <clears throat> if we add, what happens when we add a shower? Can we just add one shower? What do you think? No? Why not? There will be code requirements for... For who? For what? For the... Let's uh, talk about a shared occupancy shower, one shower, men and women. Yeah, right, I'm kidding. Okay. That's not going to, yeah, no, that's not an option. So now we got to have showers, men and women. What else happens when we throw those showers in? You said code requirements. What code? Plumbing code requirements. Plumbing code and another big one. Americans with Disabilities Act. As soon as we add one shower, now we have to have it be ADA compliant. And someone might ask yourself, why are the handicapped folks riding their bikes to work? ADA doesn't care. It doesn't care the, the, you know, what these showers are going to be used for. What it says is if you provide any, all right, how big did that space for showering just get? A lot bigger. There we go. A lot bigger, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about carving square footage out of the floor plan for showers and the, maybe, maybe a bigger mechanical system. We may or may not be talking about extra cost for a mechanical system that can produce that much hot water. Now we also, uh, the owner needs to be aware of what? Like on an ongoing fashion. Maintenance. Cleaning. Now you're cleaning, now you've added a locker room and a shower. Okay? They will have extra, extra maintenance issues from now and forevermore. Uh, do you have lockers? Do you give people lockers? Do you rent those? I mean, you, you see where this is going. Do we have a towel service? Okay? So, does this cost a lot? The answer is... Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Exactly. 
Exactly. Maybe this is fairly cheap. Maybe this gets quite expensive if you don't have anything at all like this. There's something interesting here to note, though. Um, these racks and changing facilities have to be within 200 yards of the facility. Why does that matter? Think about building here on campus. What if you built next to State Gym by our hall? No, exactly. I mean, I mean, this is like if, if you're if we're talking about like Iowa State, if if they were building a building and it happened to be near the lead rec center, they could say, well, we already have these facilities available, and the students, you know, the occupants and and faculty could use those facilities. You know, so 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 it might not cost them anything at all. It might if they're building in the appropriate location, they could say, well. Um, we already got it. It's across the street. Faculty and students can use it. Costs us nothing. Costs us nothing, right? So that's why I say it. It you know, and that's why the answer here is well, it depends. Which strategies are you going for, and where are you building? This is a perfect example of of that where you you don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, there's there's a couple other parts here. Option two: residential buildings provide bicycle storage for 15 percent of building occupants. If this is a, you know, a facility uh, where, where we're talking about, you know, apartments, high-rise apartments, dorms, you have to provide storage for 15 percent. Testable questions, FTE occupants, which credits have you calculated? That's a common question, right? How much? That half a percent, five percent for bike racks, 15 percent if we're doing option two. Those are all testable types of questions. Documentation. Architect will probably need to um, uh, account FTE uh, employ uh, occupancy. Coordinate with landscape architects, mechanical engineer. You know the showers, the nature of the showers, where they're going to go, how many hot water demand on and on. Okay, so this could require multiple tenant or multiple disciplines and a lot of planning ahead of time. All right, any questions on this one? Okay, uh, let's pause there uh, for a break. Let's start back up at 11.50.